Hey, 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 welcome back to this latest uh, video about uh, Tableau. This one focuses on Tableau Maps. It's an introduction to maps. Uh, I'm going to go over four big things. First is an overview of what maps is in Tableau, and then the three major types of maps within this software. Number one, simple maps. Number two, filled maps. And number three, density maps. So um, this is a quick overview of maps. Maps are highly prevalent in our society. You see them absolutely everywhere, anywhere and everywhere. Whether you're going in down, down into a subway, whether you're watching a weather forecast on TV or on the web, whether you're tourists and want to go through, uh, through a, new, a new city or town, whether you're on Google Maps, they're everywhere. And due to this prevalence, we're used to seeing maps conveying uh, geographic information pretty much everywhere. We've been looking at them since we're little kids. When you want to display geographic data, you can utilize this familiarity to draw the end user into your data visualization. Since they know how maps are used, you don't have to explain them as opposed to different types of charts where depending on your numeracy, you're not as, you might not be so, so fluent. Maps also help you see regional patterns that might be difficult to spot in a, in a table. Again, depending on how well you use these maps, you can show, show how certain um, phenomena are highlighted in various regions of the maps that you use. Now, we're, I'm going to go over quickly the three different types of maps that are the most prevalent in uh, Tableau. Symbol maps, filled maps, and density maps. Uh, symbol maps. In symbol maps, specific geographic locations are marked with these various symbols. Uh, they, these types of symbol marks they can include circles, squares, or you can uh, use a, uh, um, a unique custom shape if you, you so desire. You can um, change these things in various ways. For example, you can change the form of them, the size of them, the color of them, of these various symbols and marks, and they can vary according to the measure or dimension that you're using within your map. Number two, filled maps. They're also called choropleth maps. Uh, geographic areas are shaded to, according to a measure or dimension. So depending on what that is, you, you, can, you can fill different pair areas of a map with more and less intense, more and less vibrant colors to help uh, to show the, 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 the intensity of a specific thing. Um, and then sort of similar to that, I'm going to talk quickly about density maps, the third type. They're also called heat maps. Areas of, relatively, or of relative concentration are colored intensely. Areas with sparse occurrences of the dimension in question are, are colored lightly. So you have a, ver a variety. Again, more intense is concentrated. Less intense is uh, sparsely uh, concentrated. Density maps are a really good alternative to symbol maps, especially when you have high concentration of marks making it possible to gauge the spatial distribution of individual marks. So again, it's just a different way to convey your data in a way that might be more intuitive to the user. So again, well, I just went over really briefly the overview of maps, symbol maps, filled maps, and density maps. Thank you so much for watching this, uh, this video. Looking forward to seeing you again soon. Take care.